My goal for this build was to build an arrow that would fly excellent with a fixed blade broadhead. I decided on an arrow of at least 500 grains with at least 12% front and center with a four fletch orientation. I decided on a three degree helical for my fletching to provide me with excellent arrow stabilization in flight. The shaft I'm going to be starting with is a gold tip pro hunter uh, 300 spine 9.3 grains per inch. I'm going to be cutting these to length on my homemade arrow saw. I just made this with a dremel and some scrap lumber. Uh, these were some pre-used shafts that I got that were just a hair long for me so it works out well I can just cut them to my length. After I cut all four of the shafts I'm going to be squaring the ends of them on my arrow squaring device here. Uh, to do that I'm going to take a silver sharpie and I'm just going to mark the end of the shaft. Now this is going to let me know when I've sanded down the entire end of the shaft there will be no more silver sharpie telling me that the end is square. So I'm just going to put it in the arrow squaring device here, press it up against the sandpaper and just rotate it several times. And now when there's no more silver sharpie on the end, I'll know the shaft is completely square. You'll see on this end there's still one little tiny mark of silver. I ended up having to hit this one a few more times just to get it completely square. After I've squared up the end, I'm going to clean the end of the shaft where the wrap is going to go. Uh, to do this I'm going to use an AAE Max Clean Wipe. You can use just rubbing alcohol and a rag. However, I had these wipes. They came in a kit. So I'm going to clean the last 7 to 8 inches where the wrap is going to go with these wipes. I'm going to do all four shafts and then I'm going to let them dry just for several minutes until they're visibly dry and then I'll install the wraps. To install the wraps you can use a mouse pad like many people use or if you don't have a mouse pad you can just use a magazine. I've got the Lancaster Archery Supply magazine here. So I'm just going to peel the wrap off the backing, set it on the top of the magazine. Then I'm going to simply align the end of the carbon with the end of the wrap and I'm going to roll the shaft forward while applying downward pressure to make sure the wrap is firmly seated. Now I'm just going to run my fingers along there to make sure it's fully adhered and do this to all four shafts. Now to fletch the arrows I decided to go with a AAE Max Hunter Fletch in a four fletch configuration. I'm trying to get the most stabilization I can out of these arrows and I believe this, this fletch and this combination will give me the best stabilization. Now for the first fletch, I'm going to line it up with the seam of the wrap. This is just going to give my wrap a little more strength and make sure it doesn't peel apart. Now I'm just going to insert the vein into the jig and then I'm going to prime it with the AAE Max Weld Primer Pen. This is highly recommended when using these uh, Max Hunter veins. This primer pen just primes the veins for the glue and make sure you get make sure you get a very very good adhesion. I'm going to let this dry for just several seconds and then I'm going to put a thin bead of the AAE Max Bond glue. Again, this glue is recommended for these veins. I know a lot of people like to go with just a Loctite super glue but I just wanted to get the best adhesion I could. I didn't want to have veins coming off. So I'm just going to put a thin bead right along this vein. I always end up putting too much, but that's okay. I can always wipe it off when we're done. I'm just going to hold the vein firmly in the clamp here, and then I'm going to set it in the jig and press down. And once I get this clamp seated in the jig. I'm just going to apply downward pressure here right along the vein for several seconds just to make sure it's firmly seated against the shaft. After several seconds of this I'm just going to remove the clamp from the jig and then I'm going to rotate the dial one click and now I can do the second. For these veins, I'm going with the 3 degree helical. 
Um, this this fletching jig also has a one degree offset you could go with as well, but again I'm wanting to get the most stabilization I can out of these arrows, so I'm going with the three degree helical in an attempt to get, like I said, the best stabilization I can. And again, when I set the clamp on the jig, I'm just going to apply downward pressure to make sure that vein gets firmly seated against the arrow shaft just for several seconds. And then again, I can pull the clamp off and rotate the jig to the next click. And now I can do the third and the fourth vein. After I've completed the fourth vein, just take the arrow out of the jig, and you can see I've got that nice three degree helical fletching there, should, be, should give me great stabilization. Once I've completed the arrow, uh, I just set it off the end of the table here. I don't want any pressure on the veins, and I'm just going to leave them to dry here for about 24 hours. After they've cured for a day, I'm going to go ahead and install my inserts. I chose to go with a 100 grain brass insert up front. I'm trying to get a high front of center to make the arrow pulled rather than pushed when it's shot. So I'm going to go ahead and install a broadhead. I'm using the Steel Force Fat Head 100 grains here. And I'm going to dry fit the insert with broadhead attached into the arrow and spin it to make sure the insert is aligned with the arrow shaft. Now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for any kind of wobble at the end of the shaft. Now if I see, detect any kind of wobble, I'm going to rotate the insert about a quarter turn and spin it again to see if that eliminated any wobble. As you can see here, it's pretty straight. There's a very, very, very slight wobble at the end of the shaft. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate that insert a quarter turn again, just in an attempt to eliminate as much wobble as I can. Another way of doing this is by putting the broadhead up against a fixed object, such as this WD-40 can, and rotating it very slowly on the spinner. And you can see the tip of the broadhead just has a little bit of wobble in it. You can tell as it changes its place against the letters. So I'll just rotate this a quarter turn and see if that eliminates it. Now, once I have the broadhead straight and where I want, I'm going to take a sharpie and I'm just going to mark the insert against the shaft. This is going to let me know where to align the insert once I glue it in. Now to glue the insert in, I'm choosing to use a hot glue to adhere it. Uh, I like to use this because if I have to remove the insert, I can simply stick the end of the arrow in boiling water and pull the insert out. It makes it really easy to change out inserts and adjust your front of center. So I'm just going to apply some hot glue to the end of it, make sure it's nice and hot. Then I'm going to line up the red Sharpie mark on the insert with the red Sharpie mark on the end of the shaft and push it down firmly. And as you can see here, it's almost perfectly aligned. Now for the testing, I'm going to be shooting these arrows here at 60 yards. This is the first shot with field points. And what I'm looking for is just, I'm looking for no wiggle or wobble in flight. As you can see, they were, with that shot, these arrows are flying pretty straight. I'll fire a few more shots here with field points. Again, just looking for any deviation in flight, but as you can see, they're flying pretty straight. One more shot with a field point. Now the real test comes here with a broadhead. Now I've got, again, the Steel Force fat heads installed. And this is again at 60 yards, and I really slowed this down just so we can look at that arrow flight. And if you look, that arrow is flying like a dart. 
it is flying just perfectly straight. I'm extremely happy with that arrow flight. That's probably the best arrow flight I've had out of this bow. Now, I'll show that one more time. As you can see, there is no wiggle whatsoever in that arrow. It is just flying perfectly straight. Now I'm really going to step it back. We're at 70 yards here. And you can really just see how this arrow just flies straight. And you can just see it drop in right there. Do one more shot here at 70 yards. Again, you can just see that arrow drop in, and I'm just really happy with that arrow flight. Overall, I was extremely pleased with these results, and I hope in the next couple months I'll be able to test these arrows out on some live targets.